Welcome to Samurai Gaiden, the educational web series where I, Richard Schaefer, talk about the stories and anecdotes of the men and women of Sengoku Japan and the events that shape their lives. A few months ago, we talked about Minamoto no Tametomo. So now, let's talk a little bit more about a few of his brothers and his father. You'll remember that his elder brothers, led by Minamoto no Yoshitomo, the eldest brother, had sided against Tometomo and his father, Minamoto no Tomoyoshi. Along with Yoshitomo were two of his younger brothers, Yukie and Yoshinori. But on Tomoyoshi's side were, of course, Tometomo and five other sons, Yorikata, Yorinaka, Tomemune, Tomenari, and Tomenaka. Tomoyoshi's other son of some renown, Yoshikata, the father of Kiso Yoshinaka, died the year before the Hogan disturbance that Tomoyoshi's sons all fought in. It's hard to tell which side he would have been in on the conflict. So as we discussed, Tomoyoshi managed to escape the battle's initial defeat and was exiled to Izuushima. But what happened to Tomoyoshi and his younger sons? For that, we must look at what happened to the victorious son, Minamoto no Yoshitomo. After the battle, Tomoyoshi was stripped of his position as head of the Minamoto clan. His son, having been the Minamoto leader of the winning side, was elevated to the position to head of the clan. Although one could argue that Yoshitomo was lacking in filial propriety by siding in a war against his father's side, one can't fault the fact that he continually petitioned for his father to be spared. Regardless, Go Shirakawa and Taira no Kiyomori ordered Yoshitomo to kill his father. There would be no exile. Only execution. Yoshitomo called up one of his retainers, a Kamada Masakiyo, and asked for advice. He asked Masakiyo which was worse, violating the Confucian beliefs that were so prevalent in Heian-era court ideologies by killing one's own father, or by violating those same beliefs by disobeying the Emperor's command. Masakiyo advised his lord on several incidents in Buddhist texts where men were compelled to kill their own fathers because of overriding circumstances. Masakiyo reasoned that Tomoyoshi would be killed either way. He was now an enemy of the crown, after all. Might as well be killed by his own son, rather than some stranger sent by the court. prayer. Tomoyoshi is moved to tears by his son's filial display. Unbeknownst to him, they are all wise. Tomoyoshi exclaims, Ah! They say no treasure is as great as one's children. Who but my own son could help me at the risk of his own life? He then puts one final nail in the coffin that Yoshitomo has placed his conscience in, and says, I shall not forget what you've done for me, for the rest of my lives, in this world and the next. Tomoyoshi joins hand with his son and prays. Yoshitomo is distraught by his own actions and tries to remain composed. He calls Masakiyo to prepare a carriage for his father to be taken to his new home in the eastern hills. But what Tomoyoshi doesn't realize is that the carriage is actually going west. Masakiyo rides ahead and prepares a location at Suzakudori where Tomoyoshi expects to be transferred from the carriage to a palanquin. In reality, it is where he will be beheaded. At this point, we must introduce another of Yoshitomo's retainers, Harano Yoshimichi. Yoshimichi remonstrated with his colleague Masakiyo and informs the man that Tomoyoshi had adopted him and raised him like a son. Yoshimichi felt that Tomoyoshi deserved to be told of his fate, to be given the opportunity to pray before his death and prepare himself with honor. Masakiyo agreed, but on the condition that Yoshimichi be the one to inform Tomoyoshi. Yoshimichi approached Tomoyoshi and spoke to him. Are you still not aware, sir? What is happening? Yoshitomo has received an imperial command to execute you, and on his orders, Masakiyo is to kill you during the transfer from cart to palanquin. Tomoyoshi was astonished at his son's trickery. He remarked that he'd wished he had followed Tomoyoshi's advice to flee north. He announced, 
If I and my sons had fired every last one of our arrows, and had died in the fighting, my name would be known throughout the ages. Am I to die like a dog instead? I would have given my life to save Yoshitomo's. But alas, as the saying goes, parents always think about their children, though children never think about their parents. The sun had still not yet risen at Suzakodori, as Tomoyoshi kneels and exposes his head, loudly repeating prayers to the Buddha. He urges the men to be quick about his execution. He tells them that his youngest four sons will each be worth a hundred men to Yoshitomo in the future, and that he should take care of his younger brothers. Masakiyo stares at the man, and finds himself unable to strike down the head of the clan his family has served for generations. He cowardly bids Yoshimichi to take the fatal strike. Yoshimichi, too, is unable to kill his adoptive father, and outright refuses to partake in the execution. One of Masakiyo's soldiers draws his sword and strikes at Tamayoshi's neck. In the darkness, he misses and strikes Tamayoshi in the backbone. Tamayoshi turns his head and looks to his son's retainers, and he quietly remarks, Masakiyo, why don't you do it? The second sword stroke rings true, and while Yoshitomo's men stand in terrified reticence, Tamayoshi is finally killed as the sun rises over his body. With the venerable head of the Minamoto clan, Minamoto no Tamayoshi. Yoshitomo is not finished with his cruelties, though. He is called upon by Go Shirakawa again. There is one more threat to the throne that must be dealt with. Before the Hogan disturbance, court traders who had surrendered had been forced to become monks or exiled. But for almost 200 years, executing fellow members of the court in cold blood was almost unheard of. Not anymore, though. Now Tamayoshi was dead. And at his son's own orders, no less. But Tamayoshi had other sons. They had all been executed as well for participating in the battle. But Goshirokawa wanted more blood. You see, Tamayoshi had four sons who were underage. Yoshitomo's child brothers, aged 13 and younger. They, too, must be dealt with in similar but brutal fashion. So Yoshitomo reluctantly did as he was ordered, and again he sent his cronies to do the work he could not do himself. Again he calls on Harano Yoshimichi to do his dirty work. Yoshimichi is sent to the Minamoto estate of their father, of course, the boys don't yet know that their father is dead. Yoshimichi arrives at the estate and calls on the boys. Come, boys, we're going to Funaoka, in the mountains, to meet your father. The boys are all excited, save one, the eldest of the youngsters, old Tawaka. He does not recall his father ever mentioning going to Funaoka, so why now would he be there? Old Tawaka wants to wait for their mother to return before leaving with Yoshimichi. The younger brothers, however, browbeat Otawaka into going immediately. Yoshimichi escorts the boys into the mountains, and when their palanquin is sat down and they are bid to come out, Yoshimichi is already in tears. He sits down and places the two youngest boys on his knees, stroking their hair. Yoshimichi says to them, his voice shaking, Boys, you must understand. Your father was executed on the Emperor's orders yesterday morning at dawn. And now... Your brother has sent me here because the Emperor demands you all be executed as well. The boys weep and cling to Yoshimichi, save for one, Otowaka again. He stands apart from the others, arms crossed and defined. Otowaka pulls his younger brothers away from Yoshimichi and chastises them for weeping. It makes no difference if we die today as children or die as adults later, he says. Our father and brothers have already been killed, so what good is it to live on? We will simply become beggars, pointed and laughed at by our peers. Instead, we should pray that Father will meet us and welcome us into paradise upon our own deaths. Otowaka asks for a knife, and with it he cuts a piece of hair off of himself and each of his brothers, the front lock of hair. He gives these to Yoshimichi to be given as a final memento to their mother. And with that, Yoshimichi draws his sword and he executes each brother in turn, Otowaka watching on. Until when all is said and done, Yoshimichi gathers up the boys' heads and reports to the palace in Yoshitomo's stead. 
The Emperor's attendants inform him that the inspection of the children's heads will not be necessary. They're not even important enough to bother with such ceremony and ritual. Yoshitomo brought the Minamoto to a prosperity unheard of before. Yoshitomo himself was killed. Yoshitomo's sons, Yoshitsune and Yoritomo, would go on to defeat the Taira forces in the Genpei War and create the first shogunate, ushering in centuries of samurai rule. <laughs>